As an example of optimization, we're going to revisit the widget factory and see if we can make it profitable. Now, this is a, fa a, a factory that produces X widgets a month. And the cost of producing X widgets is $22,000 plus 7X. In other words, it costs $22,000 just to keep the lights on. And then every additional widget that it makes costs $7. And the price it can sell the widgets for is 10 minus X over 10,000. So if it makes 10,000 widgets, it can sell them for $9. If it makes 20,000 widgets, it can sell them for $8, and so on. The more it makes, the more it floods the market, the lower the price. So right now, they're making 10,000 widgets and selling them for $9. So that means that their revenue is $90,000. But their cost is $92,000. So they're losing money. Their profit is negative 2,000, the 2,000 in the red. So you've just been appointed manager of this factory, and your job is to make it profitable. Can you do it? So you're going to have to find the value of X that maximizes the profit and see if that X is, if the, if the profit that results is positive or negative. So the first thing you do is you figure out what the costs are. Well, we, we already knew the costs and we knew the price. And if you take the price and multiply by the number of things you sell, that's your revenue. Revenue is number of items times price. And so since the price was 10 minus X over 10,000, the revenue is 10 X minus X squared over 10,000. And then the profit is the revenue minus the cost. And that's three X minus X squared over 10,000 minus 22,000. Okay. Note that we're using a lowercase p for price, a capital P for profit. Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to compute the marginal cost, the marginal revenue, and the marginal profit. So that means you have need to take the derivatives of these functions with respect to x. Fortunately, that's pretty easy. The derivative of 22,000 plus 7x is 7. The derivative of our, of our revenue function is 10 minus x over 5,000. And the derivative of our profit is 3 minus x over 5,000. And so we notice that the marginal profit is 0 when we're making 15,000 items. If we make less than 15,000 uh, items, then the marginal profit is positive. If we make more than 15,000 items, the marginal profit is negative. So if we're making fewer than 15,000 items, we can make more profit by increasing production. If we're making more than 15,000, then each additional widget is costing us money and we should lower production. So the optimal production is where the derivative is zero. What goes up has to stop before it comes down. At the maximum of, of a function, the derivative is zero. So in fact, here are the, is a graph of the profit function. And you see that the profit is maximized at 15,000. Now, that doesn't tell us whether the the profit is positive or negative. For that, you have to plug it back into the, the function for P, for P of X. You plug in 15,000, and it turns out that you get 500. So at a production level of 15,000 widgets, the factory is profitable. It's barely profitable, but it's profitable. And so you can keep it open. The workers can keep their jobs. Everybody's happy. If you look at the graph of the marginal profit, the marginal profit we saw was positive up to 15,000 and negative afterwards. So where the marginal profit was positive, the curve, the profit curve was heading up. Where the marginal profit was negative, the curve was heading down. Where the marginal profit is zero, that's where the curve reaches its peak. So by looking at places where the marginal profit is zero, you can optimize your production. And in this case, you can save the factory. There's a hitch, though. In the real life, you really don't specify. Um, you can't control demand. You don't really make a certain number of items and then just throw them on the market at auction. What you do is you adjust the price. And then according to the price, a different number of people will put in orders, and then you fill the orders. 
So instead of thinking of price as a function of production level, you should think of production level as a function of price. The algebra is pretty simple. Just multiply by 10,000 and then put the x on the other side of the equation. We get that x is 100,000 minus 10,000 p. And we call this the demand function. The demand function is how many orders you're going to get as a function of the price. And it's generally decreasing. The lower the price, the more people will buy your product. And then the revenue is still going to be the price times the number of items. So you take the demand function and multiply by p, and that gives you your revenue. And then to figure out your cost, your cost is 22,000 plus 7 times however many widgets you're going to make. So that's 22,000 plus 7 times the demand function. And that works out to 722,000 minus 70,000 P. And then the profit is the revenue minus the cost. So it's 170,000 P minus 10,000 P squared minus 722,000. Okay. So to maximize profit, instead of taking the derivative of p with respect to x and set it equal to zero, you take the derivative of the profit with respect to the price and set it equal to zero. The derivative of the, of the profit with respect to price, which is not called the marginal profit. Margin, marginal things are derivatives with respect to number. This is a derivative with respect to price. The, the derivative with respect to price is 170,000 minus 20,000 p. And that is zero when P is eight and a half dollars. So the right price to charge is eight and a half dollars per widget. And then if you look at the demand function, eight and a half dollars per widget means that there will be 15,000 orders. So it really is the same situation we had before, only everything was described in terms of price instead of in terms of numbers. The revenue is 8.5 times D of 8.5. Revenue is 127,500. The cost winds up being 127,000. The difference is 500, and your profit is 500. Anyway, sometimes you deal with marginal quantities, but sometimes in the real world you can't control the quantity. You can only control the price, and then you have to do everything as a function of price. But no matter how you slice it, you always find the maximum by taking a derivative and setting it equal to zero. When the derivative goes from positive to negative, that's where your maximum is.